All right, welcome to our industrial robotics lab. I'm going to go over some of the safety slash lab rules associated with the lab here in Blue 62. Um, the first and foremost, um, in this lab, like many of our labs, you are not allowed to work in this lab without an instructor present. So you must have an instructor present prior to working in this lab. So one of the reasons why you'll see this door is normally locked and you have to have a key to get in here. Um, all IO wiring must be verified by an instructor prior to energizing the cell. So as part of this lab, um, students will actually wire up interfacing controls to the robot I.O., to the digital I.O., on the robot controller itself. Um, but they are not allowed um, to power up any of the I.O. or the cell until wiring has been verified by an instructor. Um, probably the biggest one in here is number three, and this, this is true for all of our robots in here, whether it's a SCARA robot, a six-axis, or a collaborative is we t teach the students and tell them to always assume a robot's going to move, um, regardless of what they think the status of the robot is. Um, there's several pinch points that, that um, exist, especially on the six-axis robots, um, and we just don't want any, uh, any uh, fingers getting caught or anything like that. Number four is that emergency stop push button must be within reach of the operator at all times. This one is a, a really important one. Um, what that means is, whether you're running um, in a jog mode or you're running in an autonomous mode or automatic mode, um, the idea is that you are holding a teach pendant. A teach pendant has the emergency stop available on it, and then that is going to be hit. Um, that would be true both for our six-axis robots as well as our collaborative robots that also have a teach pendant with an e-stop on them, or our SCARA robots, which have an e-stop right here at the desk. Is That e-stop must be within reach of the operators. What students cannot do in this lab is allow this robot to run independently and walk away, take a break, or anything like that. All right, that's one of our big ones. Number five is robot cells must be de-energized prior to any maintenance. When I say maintenance, um, that's, that could be involve things like greasing joints and stuff like that, but it's more likely um, things like uh, wiring, troubleshooting. Um, we want to de-energize that, that uh, cell prior to any maintenance. Um, operating area must be clear of personnel and tools prior to jogging or running the robot. Um, so only the things that you need in the cell should be in the cell. Um, all tools must be returned to the appropriate toolbox. So you'll see in the back of the lab, we do this is less of a safety rule and more just a good lab rule, is that we do have the tools that they need in this lab, um, but um, we want to make sure those tools are returned so when somebody needs an Allen wrench or a or screwdriver, um, it's available to them. Um, Number eight here, an instructor must be present for all automatic robot operations. So all of our robots can be put into automatic mode. So you'll see down here that we do have a, a, a jog mode or a manual mode, T1, and then we have an automatic mode right here. And the automatic mode is what actually allows the robot uh, to run based upon you know, discrete I.O. or to run based upon timing or whatever it might be, could be vision. Um, we don't let the students run in auto mode without an instructor present at their cell. So that's a very, very important safety precaution there. And then like many of our, our labs here, you'll see all beverages must be in spill-proof containers. And then troubleshooting is always going to begin with a multimeter. And probably the biggest thing on that multimeter thing here is students are expected to have a multimeter. Um, if they don't have a multimeter, they can check one out from us. Um, but they are expected to have one here, um, both for troubleshooting or for verification of voltage if they're isolating power or something like that. So that's the robot lab.